Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. In fact, it really should be thank you very much for waiting for us because we are, we are, you know, we're, we're a tad behind schedule to put it uh, mildly. Uh, so sorry about that, but um, we're here now and um, roaring to go. Our guest this morning is Mr. Ni Akishiju. He's a journalist, he's a writer, and a policy analyst. Uh, a fine morning to you, Mr. Akishiju, in our Abuja studio. Very fine morning to you, Uncle Yori. It's uh, really great to be here. Indeed. So, um, Mr. Akishiju, let's talk about uh, the kind of uh, brouhaha that we're hearing over the federal government's um, uh, decision to relocate some you know, key uh, agencies uh, federal agencies, national agencies, uh, to Lagos, and in particular talking about the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria as well as the Central Bank. That has led to a lot of commentary, coming especially from the North, and indeed um, you might be aware that uh, uh, an organization, Joint Action Com uh, Committee of Northern Youth Associations, uh, actually held a press conference, and they, uh, the way they see it is that um, uh, this violates the whole principle of... Um, you know, uh, equal participation of all the regions, and uh, there's just been a brouhaha. Uh, first of all, Mr. Kishiju, what, what is your understanding as to the reason why the federal government thinks this is a, a necessity? I, I think uh, principally those, um, those ministries or uh, agencies involved are actually business economic oriented uh, agencies. Uh, we're talking about uh, departments in the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, units in the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, the Federal uh, Aviation Authority of Nigeria, which is principally uh, a business-driven entity too. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it goes beyond the normal uh, civil service public uh, department engagement. Uh, so, to my mind, I think the decision uh, would have to be about corporate decision on how to optimize uh, uh, operational efficiencies. And to that extent, there is, there is no argument, you know, when a corporate body takes a decision on how to optimize its operational efficiency, one, in terms of service delivery, uh, two, in terms of uh, uh, either enhancing revenue collection or reducing waste or even, you know, removing possibility of leakages in its uh, revenue channels. So um, when a decision like that is made, it is not based on sentiments, uh, nor that, neither is it based on geopolitical uh, consideration. It has to be, it is based on purely business decision. And I think uh, one item in that, regard, in that regard that struck me was actually uh, when uh, I got to know that some workers, some staffers of uh, these, these, uh, these uh, departments and agencies were actually posted out, you know, as if they were doing a special service when in fact they should be, they, they, are, they are supposed to be on routine engagement, which means to say that you resume between 8 and 5 o'clock, you know, 8, 9 hours that you are supposed to be engaged in your routine uh, job. But rather than be engaged in your routine job, you are posted out for special engagement where you are paid DTAs, duty tour allowance, and other forms of allowances because you were, you were operating outside your geographical space, your normal geographical space. Uh, well, that would eventually, you know, have implication for, uh, for uh, uh, what do you call it, for operational uh, cost, you know. So if it is possible to actually locate those agencies to where there are availability of spaces, one, and to where they are directly engaging their customers, their, uh, their consumers, and, uh, and their publics, as it were, it's, it saves the agency's revenue. At the end of the day, those revenues saved will also translate to higher earnings for the federal government. And when you have higher earnings for the federal, federal government, you also have increased earnings or increased revenue to be shared amongst the three tiers of government at the level of FAC. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Akishiju, because um, 
Um, that, that is a sort of a, a, a rational uh, way to look at the matter. But um, w w what would you say against those that, um, what is the word now? Is it uh, uh, an undue suspicion of every move of government and talking about uh, uh, disenfranchising uh, a particular section of the country? Uh, have we arrived at that time when undue sensitivity is creeping into uh, affairs, and if we're not careful, it actually could stymie uh, operations in terms of if, if um, the government's concerned, uh, if they begin to look at, oh, uh, what are these people going to say about this particular mode? I mean, we have to get on with it, do what we need to do uh, along the lines that you have spoken of. But these kind of situations where we're getting press conferences to cry out against a disenfranchisement, allegedly, uh, what do you make of it? I, I don't really see any indication of disenfranchisement. What I see and what is becoming obvious is the fact that um, the elites, Nigerian elites, where they believe their interests, you know, uh, and it's, it's, it, it cuts across all uh, ethnic uh, divides. Where they believe their interests is being impugned or impinged, uh, come out vociferously uh, to not only incite public sentiment, you know, but in most cases to get across, to put across um, agitative identity uh, conspiracy, you know, and by so doing, we lose our focus on the facts of the matter and then start pursuing issues around sentiments and base sentiments for that matter. Uh, the, the first, what, what is the essence of the federal uh, territory, federal capital territory? It's a creation of law, one. It is a product of the Nigerian federal system. And of course, everybody knows that, uh, everybody, especially those who are making those comments, know that Every inch of the federal capital territory was paid for from the federal federation account. So, as it were, there is no ethnic group that is supposed to be the custodian of the federal capital territory. The federal capital territory belongs to all Nigerians. And the fact that uh, you have all federal institutions and agencies, and of course, uh, the harms of government operating out of Abuja does not limit the fact that if there is a need to have some other agencies operate outside Abuja for effectiveness and for eff efficient service delivery, it's, it's, it does not translate to the fact that uh, the federal capital territory, for instance, is being moved from Abuja to another place, or to Lagos, uh -huh. let's be specific, as it were. Exactly. So exactly. those who are talking about marginalization, Perhaps we should ask them, on whose behalf are they talking about marginalization? Because everybody that knew the trajectory of the decision that led to the movement of the Federal Capital Territory to Abuja, as it were, will know that it was done out of equity and out of a clear objective-mindedness for Nigerians to have a space where everybody can lay claim to. So it's, 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 uh, it's uh, <laughs> amusing. When especially you see respected individual from certain parts of the country that claim that wants to lay claim, you know, to, uh, to the standing or the status of Abuja or that wants to lay claim to the custody of Abuja as it were. Indeed. Um, well, as you said, um, it is, it's not very strange, uh, um, but I wonder if the elite... I mean, I did say the, the organization that held, uh, that held the press conference was the, um, they referred to themselves as the Joint Action Committee of the Northern Youth Association. I don't know if that is really the elite. Um, you know, people, they've taken advantage of the right to have their say. And um, this that they are projecting, that it's against the very idea uh, of um, which you've just described, the very idea of the national uh, character of Abuja 
uh, and how it was brought into being, and how any of this could actually be working against that, um, as you've just explained, uh, it really beggars belief. But such is their belief, and um, they are, you know, expressing, you know, their what how how they see it. But I think it makes a lot more sense uh, what you have just explained that it's all about operational efficiency. But then everybody is entitled to their opinion. I suppose it shouldn't sway uh, government. Government probably has, you know, a bit of work to do in terms of assuaging whatever fears they are, uh, explaining things that are not quite clear, and if need be, uh, prove these things. Because you did say that with a much more efficient, you know, uh, federal agencies, for instance, uh, then there'll be more, you know, revenue to share around. Uh, but people are seeing it as the right to regional participation, uh, whatever that means. And I don't know how that is being compromised by a few units of the Central Bank and the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria uh, moving to Lagos, which I, where I understand most of these businesses will be sort of, um, uh, most of their business concerns and interests will be sort of concentrated in. It seems to stand to reason. Well, I, I think we can even go beyond, beyond uh, this uh, immediate consideration and have a flip back to our history of waste. Um, when the federal government uh, apparatus of states and agencies, MDAs, uh, all MD, M MDAs collectively were moved uh, from Abuja and from Lagos to Abuja, we, we, have, we have been, uh, do I say Lagos state or the Nigerian people were left with a legacy of waste <laughs> uh, in, in terms of the vast real estate that was more or less abandoned. Because so while there was a plan of engagement or movement from Lagos to Abuja, there was no backup plan on what to do with the vast real estate that would become empty on the, the movement uh, to Abuja. So whoever, I mean, we, we know what's happening, the state of uh, deterioration of uh, the uh, federal secretariat, Ikoyi, that's, yes. that's a huge, a huge, a, a, a huge, vast real estate. And not just real estate, premium. It's, it's on premium land, you know. And up to today, it's, it's, it's there, rotting it's since there. 1991. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we also looked at uh, the defense house. We also look at NET, Nigerian uh, uh, yes. communication, telecommunication uh, uh, house. That was, that was uh, uh, the tallest building in the whole of West Africa at a point in time. But we moved everybody and abandoned that uh, building without knowing what to do with it. The defense house, you know, the former Ministry of Defense. It's, it's, a, it's a huge functional building by the time we moved, uh, they were moving out of it, but now it's there, abandoned. And you can start counting so many of such structures. So many of them. If, if we are going to move capital, it does not translate to abandoning where we are moving out of. We are supposed to use those structures to enhance capacities and capabilities, and of course to even make more earnings for the federal government. Indeed. Um, let me bring on uh, Mr. George uh, in Ikeja. Thank you very much for calling in. Please go ahead now. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning. Uh, good morning to your guest. Uncle Yari, I think people should just stop heating up the politics unnecessarily. The capital of Nigeria was Lagos before. When it was uh, being moved to Abuja, we didn't hear uh, Yoruba leaders or cultural organizations in the southwest saying, they are, they are robbing us of our economic and political power. You, you, I, it is this uh, recent election that has just made ethnicity to come to the fore in Nigeria, and it's very, very unfortunate. If somebody, uh, if somebody stumbles in Lagos or elsewhere in Nigeria and it falls down, for Hanis and people will say they constructed the road, you know, in the way that he went and he man passes that place, he will fall down. What is happening? We don't need all this. I worked in Central Bank before. The department that they have asked to come to Lagos, in the first place, 
doesn't even have any reason to be in Abuja. 95% of the banks that they are supervising, they are in Lagos. So in, when they were in Lagos, they were paying them money to go to other states to go and supervise them. If 95% of the banks that you are working and supervising are in Lagos, why do you need to be in Abuja? The other departments that they also have to be in Lagos, most of their operational you know, exigencies are in the Lagos area. And let me ask, what economic or socioeconomic power does it take away from the north if some departments in central banks are moved to Lagos or elsewhere? What, what, does it, what do they stand to do? If you have uh, somebody that needs to be employed in the bank, it's not done in Lagos now. It's still done in Abuja. So I, I, I don't see the reason why all this. I think it borders on ignorance. People do not seem to know the implications of the things that they are saying. The federal capital territory does not belong to one ethnic group. If you look at the map, it is at the center of Nigeria. I think that was the reason why it was shifted to that place. It doesn't belong to one region. This is, I mean, we, we should just do away with all these ethnic things and discuss things that are, are serious. I'm just tired of hearing all this. Good morning. Hi, morning. Thank you uh, very much. Um, as uh, Mr. Atishi Ju has also explained, uh, that sentiment of the federal capital territory um, belongs to all uh, Nigerians, um, wherever you happen to be in the country, uh, whatever the uh, region. So talking about a, a, a regional uh, dispossession or uh, some advantage, or some disadvantage now accruing to you know, a particular reason as a result of all of these. That, that was the germane question that uh, Mr. George asked there, Mr. Akishiju. So, so what exactly is it that would have been of benefit, so to speak, uh, to the North that is now cancelled out now, apart from the efficiencies uh, that have been spoken about? So I, I think perhaps the Minister of Information and uh, all those concerned have a bit of work to do to, you know, uh, yeah, I, I guess we can't just say, uh, ig ignore these things. No, but uh, maybe there they just needs to be some education or re-education uh, to sort of uh, in inform us. And um, it is also worrisome that we're getting these kind of conversations. Instead of about one Nigeria, we're getting comments, essays, almost colloquiums on uh, regionalism. It's, it's, I don't think it's anything to be encouraged, Mr. Kishiju. It should not. It should not. I, I, yes, uh, going back to your comments on uh, the information minister, I, I think um, there, are, there are certain things or there are certain issues we, we don't need uh, to allow it to linger because when it lingers, it allows for conjectures and it also becomes contagious because uh, uh, over time, you will see mm -hmm. all manners of people forming uh, uninformed positions on, the, on such issues. I, I, till now, I have not seen anywhere where the uh, CBN, for instance, had issued a formal, issued a formal statement explaining this position. I have read the fan position, which was very, very clear. Uh, but the CBN, it's, uh, it's not too clear. We, we can only assume because uh, the papers, the newspaper that reported it uh, actually ascribed uh, the reportage to, to sources. But I think it's also important that uh, we have a formal engagement by a high officer of the state, you know, to explain all this. But beyond okay. that, Nigeria had grown to a level where we cannot be imputing ethnicity, disadvantages, and all that to, uh, to any decisions made by government or by yeah. people in government. Uh, okay. One, one second, second please. I, I, beg, I, beg your, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Sorry about that, Mr. Kiji. You, um, uh, Olawale has come on the line, and I, di I didn't want to lose him. Good morning, Mr. Olawale. Yeah, yeah good morning, uh, Professor Yeri Folani. Uh, welcome back. I think Nigeria should grow beyond this uh, trivia uh, sentiment. Look, the, uh, the capital of Nigeria was once in Calabar. From Calabar, to Kogi State, Lokoja. Okay? 
from that place to Lagos, and from Lagos to Abuja. The reason why it was cited in Abuja was because it was the center. That does not mean all the paraphernalia of office to go to uh, Abuja. Okay? These things have been explained on several occasions. For economic reasons, they brought a section of uh, Central Bank back to Lagos, okay, and uh, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. When I was seeing the service going to Abuja from Lagos, to realize that Nigeria Security and Printing, that is an arm of the Central Bank, wasn't working. They were printing the, uh, something in Lagos. Okay? But for so much pressure to take it back to Abuja, it was not economic to do. But I think Nigeria should grow as a nation. Let us think as a nation, not in terms of region or ethnic group. God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lawale, uh, for calling in. Um, uh, Mr. Kishiju, I think I'll just take a break now. Uh, we'll be right back to continue with this conversation and taking calls on this sole subject of um, what is the whole fuss about the uh, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and uh, aspects of the central bank being recalled to Lagos. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Every second, every minute, every hour, and every day, time doesn't just tick away. It's a countdown to political decisions that shape our world. This country must move in. Imagine the impact these decisions have on our lives. Some are consequential, others may leave us intrigued or baffled. You will have no better friend and partner than a year. Step in and feel the frenzy like never before. Join me every weekday for an hour of fact-finding interviews but questions caught to the core. What does Tinubu has that other 17 candidates do not have? I will dig in to get to the heart of issues from local politics to global insight. Join me as I unearth the power plays, jaw-dropping revelations and the unfiltered truth. This isn't just politics, it's unraveling the stories that matter. Brace yourself for Politics Tonight every weekday at 8 p.m. where every decision echoes along the corridors of our lives. Politics Tonight, only on CBC News. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Kishiju is uh, still with us. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ni Akishiju is a journalist, writer, and a policy uh, affairs analyst. And uh, we're looking at the, you know, the statement that uh, certain federal government um, institutions uh, will be coming back to Lagos, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, and um, the, um, uh, the central, uh, some, uh, some segments of the central bank. And um, is it much ado about nothing uh, when some people now begin to run a commentary that um, this is a disenfran disenfranchising uh, some aspects, uh, some people, some parts of the country? All regions should be able to appear to participate in, quote unquote, governance. Uh, so, as I said, the question is is it much ado about nothing, or is there indeed any substance to what is being alleged? Uh, Mr. Uh, Abubakar. Uh, from Kaduna, thank you very much for holding on. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Anguliori, Ang good morning. Thank you for calling in. Good morning for a wonderful job you are doing. Thank you, sir. Anguliori, let me just put my own contribution small on this CVM move or a, an important department in the CVM moving to Lagos. You see, when we are doing things, we should think of every angle. Because this CBN is for the Nigeria, and uh, Abuja is Nigeria and is federal capital. And by law, all the banks are supposed to have their headquarters in Abuja. There is no reason 
why somebody will say just because Lagos is a business area that some key sensitive uh, offices from CBA should move to Lagos because it is money. If it is something that you cannot do through internet, then you can complain. And when we are look at it critically, at least we cannot shy away from saying this is politics. And uh, when you are doing politics, you should do it with caution because let somebody or let you create a loophole where somebody will be thinking. You want to sideline him. This CBN has been in this uh, Abuja, and the business has been moving all smoothly. Why should now somebody say it is not moving fine? If it is security reason, federal government or any government, the purpose, the primary aim of any government is to keep people's lives and their properties. So if you carry CBN now, from Abuja because of security. Are you saying the people should die? CBN is better than human beings that voted you into power. If we continue this way, one will say, Tenomo's second tenu is in jeopardy. What do you say, Mr. Abubakar, about the argument yes. of uh, efficiency of you know, commercial and business operations? What do you say to that? So if they say it's for the efficiency, of the commercial uh, businesses. Every business is being done through internet now. And the money is being transferred from one hand to another through banks to others' account. And uh, from China, you can transfer money to Nigeria. From Lagos to Abuja, it's really difficult to transfer it through internet. Uncle Yori. Okay. So, so to me, so that efficiency does not even come, Uncle Yuri. Okay. All right then. They can do it. I just wanted to get your take I on it. I don't want to do it if, because now they have built the office in that CVM. More than one, one, more than six hundred offices are there, and each office can occupy twelve offices. Now they want to move and live empty rooms, just for the building to collapse. All right. Well, thank. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abubakar, for calling in from Kaduna uh, on this question. Um, I, I'm happy to have this particular perspective. Uh, Mr. Ni Akishiju, uh, this indeed, more or less, was the perspective that was being advanced by um, the um, uh, Joint Action Committee of Northern Youth Associations. Yes, yes. Uh, um... Well, I think we, I must first correct uh, an impression made by uh, Malam Abubakar. Uh, one, the, the immediate excuse or the immediate reason for re relocation one is that uh, the CBN headquarters in Abuja is overcrowded. Uh, you have a, a 4,000 capacity uh, payroll. That is about four, more than 4,000 staff, you know, and uh, the, the whole uh, capital, I mean, the whole uh, office, the, the central office there, can take, cannot take up to 2,200. So you, you have inconvenience of, uh, of space. And when you have inconvenience of space, it also impacts efficiency. But more than that, the, the truth of the matter is <laughs> internet it's, uh, is an enabler. You still have human beings that have to interface and interact with internet platforms to administer whatever is the mandate of, uh, of uh, particular offices. So uh, the, the fact that you have internet is not an immediate solution to the, to the uh, challenges of what we are talking about. We are talking about banking supervision, for instance. You need accredited officials of the CBN to physically interface, you know, with, uh, uh, with banking as, uh, deposit money banks. And if we are talking about banks, we are not just talking about cent we are not talking about con commercial banks alone. You have merchant banks. You have non-financial banks. You have discount houses. All manners of, uh, all manners of financial uh, finance houses. So all those, 
all those uh, units, all those uh, companies, as it were, form their own ecosystem, you know, that you need accredited officers of the CBN to interface with. It's just like an auditor, for instance. You don't expect an auditor to audit all your, all your books, as it were, on, online. There, is, there will always be a point for physical interface and interaction, you know, and that forms the basis of auditing in the first instance. So, and again, you also have convenience of access by these publics, as, as it were. And I'm talking about, in the case of CBN, uh, the financial institutions that also need to engage with the CBN by, by access. And by access, I mean how fast, how, how fast, how speedy can they get in touch or touch base with their regulator? The CBN being their regulators, would they need to spend so much, you know, to spend so much outside their states or outside their area of uh, operation for them to come talk to their regulators and all that? What is the cost implication of that kind of engagement? At the end of the year, when you collectively had all together, we can say that more than 10 billion error is lost to such kind of engagement. Would we consider that as efficient? We will okay. consider, uh, consider that as rational money that, can, that could have been saved either for shareholders in the case of uh, uh, those who owns the company or for Nigeria in the case of uh, the, the, the three tiers of government that, would be, that they will share eventually. So this, these, are, these are larger considerations than, oh, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's about one a region marginalizing the other. Uh, for me, I am looking principally at earnings, you know, the, 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 the the credit and debit side of the ledger. What okay, Mr. is the bottom line at the end of the let day? Me bring in, all right, let me bring in Eric uh, in Delta State. Thank you for holding on, Eric. Good morning. Eric, are you still there? Oh, dear. Now does that mean the call from Eric in Delta State dropped? Eric? Eric, can you hear us? Uh, 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 yes, I'm here. Uh, Good morning. Oh, okay, okay. Please, please carry on, Eric. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead now. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I can hear loud and clear. Okay. Continue, please. Yes, I'm listening to your programs. I really enjoy it. Um, we're waiting for you. If you heard me, please continue. I think there's an awful delay uh, between us because I was encouraging Eric to um, please go ahead, but perhaps there's the delay and he wasn't hearing me as I was speaking and um, uh, because he was still affirming to something that I had said before. And the point is, Mr. Akishiju, that um, I think you've made the um, point that, look, nothing is being taken away, we're talking about the central bank, for instance, nothing is being taken away or taken out of central bank operations. Uh, but you've spoken about the, one, the over, you know, the, the, the overcrowding, uh, the efficiency that is compromised as a result of that. Then you've also talked about um, some aspects of the business that might not be known to uh, many people. So uh, I, I guess, really, this is going to be a matter of uh, you had said that we need to have a definitive statement. It can help if Central Bank itself comes in on the matter and um, um, uh, speaks to the matter as to why you know, these um, movements are, are necessary. Uh, it's not as if something is being taken away from Central Bank. After all, Central Bank belongs to Nigeria. It doesn't matter where it is. Wherever it is, it is the Central Bank of Nigeria, not the Central Bank of Ikore Pene or, or Elastamaja or anything like that. So it doesn't matter where it is. And um, perhaps the central bank will also speak to the issue. It hasn't for now. Uh, but that whole matter about the efficiency uh, can, cannot be uh, underemphasized. Um, I didn't hear, but I've been told that somebody from Magodo. Come again, please. Uh, uh, good morning. I didn't catch your name. Uh, uh, Peter from Magodo. Good morning to you, Peter. 
Yeah, my name is um, Peter Chikozie Owalaka from Magodo. Okay, please go ahead. I just wanted to contribute to the program. All right, please do. Okay, I, 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 it's unfortunate that Nigeria is generally uh, uh, with um, this mentality of uh, this zone. We are the owner of this world, the owner of that. And it's uh, quite unfortunate, you know. Me, I have even been conversing that if there's a way we can even do this uh, rotational uh, division um, in a way of um, making it, uh, 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 let it be 10, 10 years, in terms of uh, making the uh, capital of Nigeria, we will make it 10 years in Enugu, make it 10 years in Abuja, make it 10 years in Lagos State. At least for us to be able to balance uh, the whole thing, you know, because it's just the way I see things, Nigeria is not balanced, and I think that Nigeria needs a restructuring. In this uh, issue of CBN, CBN is a financial institution. If you say CBN should be in Obama shop for it to, you know, uh, function effectively, I don't think there's any, any, any wrongdoing in, in that. And I really appreciate uh, Ashwaju Bolatun, who is my leader. You know, I'm not saying this because I know him, because I know he, who he is. He's not a tribalistic man, person. I'm an evil guy, but I go to his house in the midnight. He opens his gate for me. You know, so that's uh, if there's a way he can do this. Do we, and other agencies who are functioning in Abuja, who are in, who, that are in Abuja that are not functioning well. If, is, if they are domiciled in Lagos and therefore they will function well in Lagos, that is soft city. That is not a big deal. If it's in Enugu, they can function. Then this, this decentralize all these things. Because once this zone is just being developed with um, all of common words, it's not supposed to be like that. This is that need to be balanced. That's my contribution. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you uh, very much uh, for calling in. And... Um, it certainly isn't a political matter, as Mr. Akishi, you are guest this morning, has been at pains to uh, explain. Um, it's, it, it can only be for efficiency, but uh, these conversations are not unusual. And uh, there are people who are saying that, isn't it about time that we sort of, you know, turn down the volume a bit, uh, even though everybody has a right to their say, turn down the volume, uh, the volume a bit on these, uh, some of these uh, sentiments that are divisive more than um, being uh, cohesive. But as I said, people still will have their say, uh, and that is because of the way they see it. And um, Mr. Bubaka, who is the only person who has called in uh, so far, sort of uh, on the side of, indeed, he does see uh, some of the critics, he does see reason in some of the observations uh, of the critics, you know, what Mr. Abuaka was, say, was saying that, look, there's a lot that can be done online now. A lot is being done online. Why wasn't that explored? Uh, but, but then there's the whole matter of efficiency, overcrowding, as we've spoken about, and additionally, Mr. Kishiju has added that uh, there are aspects of the job, as it relates to CBN, for instance, in the supervisory role, where there has to be a one-on-one -on -one engagement. So if all of these things are, you know, you know, adjusted in the right way, but some people still think that um, there still a, is a way in which you can see it as a disenfranchising my region, then a lot more uh, perhaps um, observation and study is required. Did I have uh, Mr. Mohammed in Abuja? Good morning to you, sir. Yes. Good morning, Uncle Yori. You are welcome back. Good morning. Thank you very, very much. Happy New Year. Happy Christmas. Happy everything. Co area. Compliments of the New Year. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, you know my point. I'm a, a die-hard supporter of Mr. President. We have campaigned for him, but this time around, I'm not going with his policies now. You know, we complain about first of civil removal, and now some of his as workers are now trying to damage his image. If Obasanjo cannot relocate fans and all other departments to Lagos, why him? Why now? Why now? Obasanjo did not relocate anything to Ogun City. Why now to Lagos? There, there is a suspicion there. It, it, like that, apocalypse. if this thing is happening now, the headquarters of Abuja will be removed too, back to Lagos. Because that time he will say, I don't need anybody to vote for me. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, but Mr. So Mohammed, it's not no, no, that no. Central Bank is no more in Abuja. It's not that uh, Federal Airports Authority know, is no more in Abuja. Abuja. That's not what is being said. Central Bank in Lagos. They have every zone, every state, they have Central Bank. Why can't they do whatever they want to do there? Why should they remove the departments from Abuja to Lagos? 
Okay, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying without comment. Be, be, because that's what you've just said. Um, well, uh, especially uh, the way in which you phrased it, when Nobasanjo was there, him being from Ogun State, he didn't um, reallocate or uh, uh, relocate uh, anything to Ogun State. And the fact that um, the president, you know, he's known as a Lagosian, he was a governor of Lagos State, and that Lagos is, is mentioned now, uh, you've sort of linked that uh, to the president and... Uh, uh, why, if, if, why now are the kind of questions you put? Well, uh, Mr. Akishi, you, as I said, everybody has the right to their say. You have heard it. Obasanjo didn't send anything to Ogun. Why is Tinubu sending things to Lagos? Well, I, I, I think uh, business decisions are business decisions. They are what you call objective, at nose decisions. It is about how you maximize your resources in a way that you draw the optimal form of uh, earnings or income from the maximization of that resources. So it's, it's, not, it's not about who you are or where you come from. I don't think this decision uh, by the CBN uh, and the FAN, I mean the Ministry of Aviation for instance, has have to do with, uh, with where the president comes from. Uh, it's just like there was a time we had a huge argument on where the headquarters of the MPA should be. There was an argument as huge and vociferous as this when uh, there was about uh, there, there was that talk about retaining the MPA in Lagos, and the, the the substantive, objective, rational position was that MPA had to do with waters, had to do with water transportation, and therefore it's and it has a history of establishment in Lagos, and therefore it was just appropriate that it should be retained in Lagos. And the argument won. And that's the same argument I am conversing here. The, the truth of the matter is, yes, you have CBN uh, offices across, the, across states in Nigeria. And wherever the CBN decides to move its unit, it is actually the CBN acting as a central bank of Nigeria wherever it is, uh, it is operating. And in this case, there is a need for convenience. There is a need for access. There is a need to save costs. There is, a, there is a need to stop leakages. We all continue to talk about leakages in government revenue channels. And if, government, if a government agency had decided to, to block such leakage, would, would, should we then start attributing some other sentiments you know, into okay. such decisions? I think this let, is, let me come in yeah, again, Mr. Kishiju. So, sorry for, I'm, I'm always doing this, interrupting you, so I beg your pardon, but it's because of calls that are coming in. Mr. Demola in Ota. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Kishiju. Good morning. Hello, Ademola in Ota. Yes, yes. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Yori and your guests. Good morning. I want to look at this issue from this point. Yes, yes. All right. I think wherever CPN is, it is not the location that determines the performance or fun. It is the, it is the uh, abilities of the people working in, that, in those organizations at a particular time that determines. So if they are there in Abuja, if they do what they are supposed to do, you get results. If they are moved to anywhere, if they, do, if they don't do the work in Lagos, you will still not get the results. So what we need to consider, to bother ourselves about, uh, with is, let there be performance. Let them say where they are. If they have to move, it will cost money. It will remain where they, where they are so that they can relate with other government agencies that are there in Abuja. So this will not be an issue. I want to say that let us demand performance from the officials there, not the movement. That is not, that's not, that's not, that's not going to solve any problem. So they should perform. And if they don't perform, let's change them and put in the right people there. Okay. It's because they are not performing. That's why we are talking about movement. Well, are, I, I, perform, I don't know. I, I don't know if non-performance is the argument, sir. If you, you, Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your calling in. 
But if you've been, if you've been following, um, it's not about performance per se. Uh, a number of reasons have been uh, adduced. Perhaps you hadn't joined the program at the time. Uh, and I don't think the least of them is the whole, uh, you know, uh, reported uh, overcrowding, as it were, uh, in the, you know, facilities at Central Bank over there, if that is indeed uh, the situation, uh, among other reasons. But uh, thank you very much uh, for calling in, uh, Mr. Ademola, and indeed the same goal, uh, appreciation goes to other people that have called in. And, um, well, I don't think we should overflog this, but we have aired it at least, and uh, we've heard from our, our analyst um, what some of the issues are. Uh, perhaps the government itself, through the Federal Minister of Information, needs to also get in on the act and sort of uh, sensitize people, inform people what's going on, because uh, it is the right of people to, to know. Uh, Mr. Akishi, I don't think uh, one should say much more about that. I want to appreciate um, what you brought to the uh, conversation, the enlightenment that has come. And um, the conversation, of course, will continue as we go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Kijiju, for coming on. All right, then. Program today. Uh, please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.